The movie begins 20 years ago, when increased solar storms turned the Earth's surface into a radioactive desert and reduced the human population by 99.7% to 21 million people. The atmospheric disturbances have disabled most terrestrial communication systems, pushing civilization to technological regression as humanity gathers in safe cities. Rock, the company that manufactures pilgrims, creates the Autonomata Pilgrim 7000s. The pilgrims are primitive human robots designed to build walls and mechanical clouds that protect the humans who inhabit the last remaining cities. The Automata robots come with two inalterable protocols of not harming any form of life and may not alter themselves or other robots. Initially, they're considered human salvation, but as they can't stop desertification, they eventually are relegated to manual labor and servant jobs. On a rainy evening, a police officer, Wallace, visits the ghetto, where he finds a robot repairing itself. Shocked by this discovery, he shoots it in the head. Meanwhile, Jacques Valcan, an insurance investigator for Rock, is checking on his last case of the day. A family is accusing a robot of killing a dog. After hearing the accusations, Jack goes to the robot and orders him to do some tasks. Despite that, the father insists that the robot killed the dog, so Jack demonstrates that it won't harm a living being, even if they force it. After running the standard tests and deciding the robot is working fine, Jack returns home to his pregnant wife, Rachel Valken. Rachel thinks that after the baby is born, they should get a domestic pilgrim, but all Jack can think about is the beach he used to visit as a kid. Later that evening, the police morgue calls him to check on the robot that Wallace shot. When he gets there, an officer tells him that the policeman who found it said it was malfunctioning and had to disconnect it by shooting it. In addition, she says that the report says it was self-repairing. After hearing that, in disbelief, he suggests running a test with the cop. The officer says they have already done it and found out that Wallace is positive for alcohol and methylamine, forcing them to put him under investigation. Still, the forensic technician opens it up and says he can't see any significant changes at first sight. However, there have been significant alterations performed inside the carcass. They discovered that the power system converters got manipulated, they have added a second DC battery as a backup, and the compensation fluid is new. She says it's a very sophisticated job that a clocksmith could have only made. The technician then gives Jack the robot's kernel and tells him that the clocksmith has altered the unit to smuggle tools and small parts based on what she found next to it. She also points out this unit doesn't have the second protocol, which is impossible. The next day, he reports his findings to his boss, Robert Bold, who doesn't believe in the possibility of a robot without the second protocol either. Jack says he's burned out and requests Robert to transfer him to the coast. However, Robert turns down the request and orders him to find someone accountable for this situation. Following the serial numbers from the self-repairing robot and its altered parts, Jacques arrives at the wall that separates the city from the desert. He suspects one of the workers tried to change or modify the unit using the robots that work there since only Rock can repair robots. He then goes to the wall and sees a worker shooting a man on the other side. The worker then says they shoot on site because it's restricted. He says they do all the work to prevent the scum from invading the city. However, Jacques says that he thought they built the walls to protect them from the desert. On the other hand, the worker tells him those pieces they found on the robot belong to 206, which is still operative. While Jack checks its charging station, 206 shows up and watches him from afar, so Jack decides to follow it. After going through a door with a broken lock, he makes it to the other side of the wall, which is the restricted area. The wall guard shoots at him when he gets there, as he's no exception. Despite us telling them not to shoot, the wall guard continues to fire at him, so he runs away and hides inside a shipping container. In this container, he finds 206 holding a box, but when he questions what's in it, it repeats what he said and sets itself on fire, leaving his question unanswered. He then takes the burned robot to Rox's labs, where they open it and examine it. They discover that the pilgrim is smuggling tools and parts, which it put inside the box. Further checking the box, they discover a nuclear battery, which the robots used to move satellites before the regression. Later, they power up the unit once more, but as soon as Jack starts asking it questions, its circuits burn out. Since a robot would never damage itself, Robert is angry because he thinks this is all Jacques' fault. 
Nevertheless, he accepts to give him the transfer if he can prove a clocksmith truly is overriding the second protocol. When he returns home, he gives Rachel the news, but she rejects the idea and asks him to leave her alone. Later, Jack decides to visit the area where Wallace shot the robot. While looking around, he finds a hidden bag with another nuclear battery. The next day, he meets with Wallace and his partner, Ellis, to ask him about what he had seen that day. Wallace agrees to help Jack find the clocksmith in the ghetto in exchange for splitting the proceeds of the battery on the black market. Together, they visit a red light house, where they meet Cleo, modified to have intimacy with humans. Cleo is capable of causing pain if that's part of her client's wishes for pleasure. Freaked out, Wallace shoots Cleo and exits the building, where Jacques scolds him for what he did. Wallace says it was on purpose because now Jacques can wait for Cleo to be taken to the clocksmith and follow them. Then, Wallace threatens him with a knife, reminding him he wants the promised money before leaving. So Jack sticks to Wallace's plan and follows Cleo's owner to the place that does her repairs. There, he meets Dr. Susan Dupre, who claims not to be the one that altered Cleo. Jack leaves the burned robot's colonel with her and tells her that if she can discover who modified it, he'll give her his nuclear battery. When he gets home, he sends Robert a report of his learning, but Rock intercepts the message. The report reaches Chief of Security Vernon Conway, who takes it to the CEO, Dominic Hawk, who orders him to take care of it. Moments later, Jack receives two messages from Rock, telling him the case has been closed and he should return the colonel. The other one is from Dupree, informing him she has found something. Later, Jack sees her at her lab, where Cleo is repairing herself because Dupree combines the shot colonel with Cleo. Two kids suddenly arrived, which interrupted their conversation. The kids shoot Dupre and go after Jock, so Jack runs and escapes through the back door. Outside, he jumps inside a car, thinking it's his cab, but Cleo is driving it. She drives away as another car hits them and even begins shooting at them. Eventually, they make it to the desert, where both cars crash when they hit a maze of stanchions, causing the accomplices to die and Jack to get hurt. In the morning, Jack regains consciousness and asks Cleo for help, but she leaves after hearing him. A few hours later, she returns, bringing three other altered robots. Together, they put Jack in a car seat that they drag through the desert while they cross it. Jack tries to order them to take him back to the city, to which they respond, it's impossible, and say they're going to a safer place instead. As these robots won't follow human orders, Jack tries to leave on his own, but the robots follow him to protect him since they still have the first protocol. When he passes out again, they put him back on the chair, feed him worms, and even build a condenser to gather water for him to drink. He then discovers the robots have salvaged many things from the cars, including the nuclear battery. Rachel's water broke back in the city, so she's leaving for the hospital. At Rox's, Hawk and Conway are talking to Robert, telling him Jack is behind a new wave of altered robots. Robert doesn't believe this because he still thinks Jack is loyal to the company. In the desert, Jock asks Cleo for the bag of salvaged items. There, he finds a flare gun, which he keeps to himself, and his pager, which he uses to send Robert a message before the battery dies. On the other hand, Robert sees the message and sends Wallace to retrieve Jock. Wallace and Ellis then drive to the desert and Jock sees their car from afar. Thinking they're there to rescue him, he shoots his flare gun to indicate his location before asking the robots to stop walking. On their walk, he hits one robot to get it to stop talking. The police officers soon catch up with them, but Wallace hits Jack as soon as he gets out of the car. When he grabs the nuclear battery and gives it to Ellis, the robots ask him to stop, so Wallace starts shooting them. He manages to destroy two and is about to shoot Cleo too when Jack kills him with the flare gun. Ellis gets scared and escapes in his car, refusing to take Jack back to the city. After that, Jack can only watch and freak out as the two remaining robots salvage as many parts as possible from the two destroyed pilgrims before leaving. After realizing they won't be carrying him around on the chair anymore, Jack salvages what he can from Wallace's pockets and follows them. While camping, Jack tells them he has another battery and will give it to them if they take him to the city. Cleo responds they will make it to their destination tomorrow, and he may be able to find a vehicle there. Meanwhile, Hawk and Conway visit Robert at his home and take him back to Rock to hear Ellis' report. Hawk explains that the first pilgrim was a quantum brain with no security protocols. However, it became too bright and didn't need humans anymore. 
Before deactivating it, this unit's last task was to program the two current protocols. They then realized that nobody can break them because people are not the ones who created them, and that's why the human mind won't understand them. Later, Robert is sent to the desert with Conway and two other officers to find and kill Jacques before more robots evolve beyond human understanding. The next day, Jacques and the two robots arrive at an abandoned factory where he meets the clocksmith responsible for the alterations. When he gets inside, he's incredibly shocked to find out another pilgrim has evolved independently. He continues to take a look at the factory and finds all the smuggled parts on a table, ready to be assembled in some strange model. After Jacques leaves the room to find a vehicle, the robots start working on this model, but they still need the final part, a nuclear battery. Later, Jack finds a car outside, but when he checks it, he finds out it's broken, so he loses hope. Because of his losing hope, he approaches the cliff's edge, seemingly considering jumping, but the clocksmith robot joins him. After some philosophical discussion, it confesses they want to go to the radioactive area where humans can't reach them. However, to do that, they need one final thing, the nuclear battery. As Jack understands his point, he hands it his nuclear battery. When night falls, Robert's team finds Wallace's body, and they decide to wait there when Conway gets a message saying two ladies will join them. A few hours later, another car arrives, bringing Rachel and her newborn daughter. Robert is upset by this, and he refuses to use Rachel as bait. When Conway stops him from going back, Robert shoots him on the shoot and gets shot in return. Meanwhile, after drinking and dancing with Cleo, Jacques watches the pilgrims finish their creation. Using the nuclear battery, they give life to some animal life robots. Afterward, he falls asleep, only to be woken up the following day by the sound of an engine. The robots have repaired the car for him, so Jack uses it to leave after thanking them and wishing them goodbye. However, he needs to stop the car midway from throwing up, and that's when he notices a scavenger bird flying around, which allows him to find Robert. Before dying in his arms, he accuses Jack of betrayal and tells him they have Rachel. Conway and his team make it to the abandoned factory and open fire on the robots, which makes one of the pilgrims jump off the cliff. When the clocksmith pilgrim refuses to follow orders, Conway shoots it before retrieving its colonel. Conway is also about to destroy Cleo when Jack suddenly arrives in the car. They open fire on him, but he keeps driving ahead as Rachel steals a knife from her captor and stabs him with it, allowing her to escape. Jack manages to hit two men with the car and shoots a third with the shotgun he grabs from one of the bodies. Then, he runs inside the factory while Conway is distracted by the animal-like robot. Conway enters the factory too and finds Jack in the highest area. After accusing Jack of betraying his people, he points out his shotgun to kill him. Still, the animal-like robot arrives and pushes him off the cliff. Jack picks up his shotgun, thinking he may have to defend himself from the robot, but they're interrupted by Rachel and the baby. The couple reunites while Cleo watches them. When she dares to touch the baby, her gentle fingers cause her to stop crying. Jack helps Cleo and the animal-like robot reach the other side of the cliff, and after saying her goodbyes to her, he and his family leave in the car. The movie ends with Jack and his family eventually making it to the coast, where he regains hope for a bright future.